Steve Harrison here and with me is Tressa Michener and Tressa is a transformational speaker. She's a best-selling author and she's really all about showing people how they can just get where they want to go in life. She's dedicated to making a profound difference in their lives by showing them how to really tap into their inner faculties to transform their lives and she shows them how to do that by first transforming their mind. Tressa, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> well, I, you know, I have to say, as I was just reading your story of how you, you know, how you got into doing this work, uh, I was blown away. I mean, share a little bit about um, just the event that made you decide to write your book. Well, Steve, I found myself in a physical prison uh, facing 30 years to life. Um, and in this prison, I began to ask myself a lot of questions. How did I get here? What happened? Um and I began to do a self-examination of looking at myself in a mirror. But during this course of time, I picked up the Bible and I began to read the Bible, not to judge anyone else or anything else. I just wanted to examine myself with this word. So as I was reading the word and uh, examining myself, I started beginning to apply that word to myself because I realized that the scripture was telling um, a way to do things. And if you did it, it actually gave the results. And Steve, one of my favorite favorite comments is that God's promises created my purpose. Oh, I love that. God's promises created your purpose. Tell me a little bit more yes. about that. Um, because it's so many promises in the Bible that God tells us, you know, that he's already done for us. He's already crucified himself on the cross for us. And uh, Steve, actually, I had a major experience when I was in prison as to where I was taken back in time and I could hear the noise and the fuss and the screaming. And I saw the three crosses and on the three crosses, it's like God literally took my body and put it inside the cross. So if you go to the scriptures in Romans, it says, says where we was crucified with him and we was buried with him and we also rose with him. So it gave me a re real reality that this is really true, that I have a newness of life. And because of that renewed mind, I can walk in those things. Mm. Yeah, I think of that other verse, right, where Paul says, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me, right? Because I died. Yes. And that's, that's, um, something not talked about very much, not applied very much. I know you're all about application. Um, and so, yes. yeah, I mean, you know, talk a little more, you know, so, you know, how did you find hope? You're there in prison. It seems so hopeless. And yet you really got spiritual insight. Um, what would you say to other people just about who are facing these tough times and they're looking for hope? Uh, what do you say to that? Well, Steve, my, I kind of like lost hope and, and just was tired even before I got to the prison. Um, I actually was in my bedroom one night and it was three days before I ended up in a county jail. I was crying out to the Lord saying, if it's a God, help me, help me. I'm tired. Help me, Lord. I'm tired. I didn't know anything about God. I didn't know too much about religion. I was very naive to all of it. But three days later, I found myself in a, in a county jail. Um, so then I had more questions and because I had more questions, cause I was like, if it's a God, cause I remember what I said, uh, if it's a God now I'm in jail, I have two children out here with no mother, no father. So how can it be a God? But I continuously held on to reading the word. Um, I actually had already had focused on Psalms 23 before I had even came to, um, got in jail. And when I was in the jail, I was in a 23 hour lockdown holding cell where you only get one hour out per day. And when the lady came, the ministers came in, I, I asked one of them, would they come over to me? And I asked her, did she know Psalms 23? And she said, yes, I didn't have any paper. So what I did, Steve, is I wrote down Psalms 23 on the floor. I stayed up all night memorizing that Psalms until I was able to repeat it back to myself. So I don't know why that was going on, but I know there's an inner power and an unction to function or uh, something inside us that kind of guides us, especially when we're naive in certain situations. And if we just listen to it, we will end up coming out on the better side. And that's pretty much what happened to me because I learned Psalms 23 and I spoke it to myself daily. Wow. 
So I'm hearing a, a number of principles there within the story, right? Cry out for help, get into the word, get serious about really, you know, putting it in front of you like you did, writing it on the floor. That was probably your only way of, of really memorizing yeah. it, learning it. And, um, you know, how did you tell us more about how you overcame this whole experience of being in a jail, you know, being in prison? I, I can't even imagine how how difficult that is to deal with and to overcome. I was facing a 30 year to life sentence, uh, which really just scared the lights out of me because, you know, here I am very naive found myself in a situation from growing up from childhood, from, from a broken home, uh, divorced parents, uh, two children by the time I was 19 years old, a very abusive relationship and found myself, you know, in the selling drugs, trying to get out of the situation and ended up doing selling more drugs. But the plan was to get out of that and live a normal life. But of course, that's always the plan. But unfortunately, I was very, very tired and tired and fed up with that life. That's why I was crying out. But I just knew that there had to be more to life than this, but I, I constantly asked myself, what am I here for? What, you know, what am I to do? You know, why does things seem to go bad in my life, even from a child? And I just began to, to focus on child paradigms and how, you know, you may not be, um, you may not have had anything to do with it starting out, but as you grow into it, those uh, seeds that were sown, they, they tend to blossom. And um, as they blossom, as an adult, you have to get on a, on a different trend or a different course and figure out how did that course of, how did you get on that course, in other words? So the, I use the word course is because I want everybody to know that that's another course that you can get on. And that other course is the one that I had got on. And that was studying and applying the word of God to me. And I actually created my own environment in the jail. I end up having Bible study like almost every night, every time I would learn something, I would teach it to all the girls. So I felt so hurt because of seeing the hurt from the, from the young ladies, the no hope and all of the situation that was going on. I, I even have the guards that would come down and come into the dorm with me because they was learning so much of the Bible and just understanding so much. And the ministers that was coming in, after I had been in there for a little while, they said that they were, would kind of leap with joy because they was excited to come in there and see me because they, they felt like they was coming in and out of the jail and it was not working for a lot of the people but they said they saw something different in me that they saw that it was hope and they finally had found someone that it was working and I was learning so much because I had so much time um, that they was learning for me so I actually to answer that question I created my own atmosphere I created my own environment I created an environment of of Christ love hope positivity respect all of that within the jail wow wow and you've written this book to, to help other people. Uh, talk about how your book, what is it that you, you find? How, how does the book help other people? So the book is really unique and it's very timeless. And the reason why I say that is because it's very personal, because I take you through all the experience from my childhood all the way till I found hope. So it's basically coming from chaos to a life of freedom and happiness. Um, so I take you step by step, and I also show you the, the applications that I took to get out. Because remember, I told you that I was facing a 30-year-to-life sentence. That 30-year-to-life sentence turned into the um, the the, um, the lieutenant at the, at the, um, at the um, I'm sorry, at the prison calling me where I was working at at that time in a, in a prison facility and saying, you have 30 minutes to get off our compound because my judge had went back and reversed my sentence so low that they had, she told me they had 30 minutes to get me off their compound. So the guard, by the time I got off the phone with her, the guard was already at the door to escort me off their premises. Wow. So that's why I say the story is very unique. It's very timeless. Um, it, if you read it, it's so much hope field in this book that shows that if you develop these inner faculties, this power within that you definitely can come out. It's not, it's, it's, it's without question because you have the inner ear, you have the inner eye, you have the imagination, you have your thoughts. But when you program these things to line up, to line up with where you're supposed to be, nothing can hold you. So really what happened is that I had I had elevated myself so high that the prison couldn't hold me anymore. So I was released. Mm. Where can people get this fantastic book? So you can get it on my website, which is www.tressamitchner.com. And you also can get it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, 
Um, and also I have a newsletter as well that you can go on my website and sign up for. Go to TressaMitchner.com, get the book, check this incredible woman out with the work that she's doing. Thanks for sharing just a tiny part of your story. And thanks for all the work you're doing just to, to bless other people and transform so many lives. Yes. Thank you so much, Steve.